Hello everyone, so in this video it's uh, some summary footage on Tandoku Cutter, which is a solo pad drill cutter that I created. Uh, Tandoku just means alone or solo because you know you're doing impact work on your own. It's made up of six sequences, so just like the traditional cutters, what I try to do is get the minimum amount of sequences to contain the maximum amount of principles. So it's essentially about close range striking how you can set them up, how you can get angles, how to deal with clinches, all that kind of stuff, to give ideas and illustrations of principles that people can then build upon and, and, and run with. And, you know, you rattle through this thing, you do all six sequences on one side and all six sequences on the other, and it's a, it, it's a tough workout. It'll get the heart rate up there. So in this footage, I walk through the actual cutter itself. Uh, uh, I show how the pad drills can also be done with a partner. And I also show what the sequences are meant to represent. Now, with all these sequences, you know, we're not saying you must do exactly this. It's a, this is an illustration of the kind of things you can do. How you can create space to set things up. How you'll need to vary, uh, um, accommodate for varying distances and all that kind of uh, stuff. So there are uh, more detailed instructions on this uh, in the app. There's, you know, there's full work long instructional on it. But this is a nice little kind of summary of this. So just so that everyone understands as well, you know, it's not a case of just holding the pad for yourself. The idea is that the hand simulates the hand that you've used to locate the head. And therefore, when you're striking the pad, what you're actually doing is locating the head and hitting. Uh, one issue we've got is when you do strike the head in that way, you want to let the head move. You want to get that brain shake. So we have to be careful about holding it too stably. Otherwise, we minimize that brain shake. Now, of course, if you're holding the pads for yourself, you have to have that bit of solidity in your pad holding. Otherwise, it's just like hitting the air, right? So, so again, this is one of these things where all forms of training are flawed. We need to work out what the flaws are in that form of training and make sure they don't exist somewhere else in another form of training. Because only real is real, right? So this mix of stuff, doing the solo sequences on the pad, doing it with a partner on the pads and then running through the drills with a partner, will give you a nice set of introductory close range striking skills. Okay then, so we've got six core close range self-defense based drills. Um, we did them on the solo pads, with a partner on the pads and with a partner, right? The solo ones on the pads, you can link together in one big drill. It's a great way to get a good workout. It's a great way to practice a lot of self-defense based close range striking in one go. You can call this whatever you want to call it. The name I gave it was Tandoka, which just means Japanese for alone, which seems appropriate for a solo training drill, right? The idea is that this hand is locating the head and telling you where it is, so what we do is by putting that pad on, that's still my hand, and this is his head, right? We have to make some compromises for the equipment, but that's a general idea. So if I was starting it and I was doing the full thing, I'd start from the I'd sit forwards with my left hand in front, so that's your basic fence pleading position. I then blitz them, so my hand's locating the head to tell me where it is. Parmeal, parmeal, it starts to drop, so I lift up and go hammer fist, and then retreat. That was the end of the drill one. Drill two, you're in a clinch, we'll do the technique in a second. Head bow, short hammer fist. Wrap his arm as you push to the side. Palm heel, elbow, palm heel. Now we have to drop the pad, I wouldn't be kneeing here, but to get it on the pads, I need to drop it, right? And then we come back to this clinch position. But that knee is barely moved, he's still upright. I then must get this rotation at the neck. So I'm cracking his neck as I throw this back foot round, you know, to crack his neck and they get it to spin, so he remains confused. Like, Doof. Right, from there, I'll do a short little head butt, which hopefully gets that response. Head goes back, groin comes forward. As the groin comes forward, I smash him in the groin. On this one, he bends a little. As he bends from there, I'll do a rising strike, a rise up, he came up. Right, so then I'll hit him with this one. For drill number four, again, it's going to be a cover and a location. The hand goes on the side of the head. I throw the hook and I feel him falling away from me. So I don't allow him to get his space. I step back into a hook myself and then move the hip in here as I do the elbow. For drill five, I'm stepping in and snatching him down, so his head's fairly close to my chest. I hit him with an rising elbow, it hasn't had the desired result of like, you know, clip him on the top of the head or whatever, so his head's still fairly down. I don't want to stay in front of him because he'll tackle me. So I'll move to the side from there to help keep him down, I can drive that hammer fist in. I then knee him to the face. If he's blocked it and he's far left, he's there, I'll, I'll continue that and I'll kick that, that leg. If this leg was forwards, so I'll go there. If this leg was forward, I'll kick it out and around our skin, which will turn me in here for number six. From there, I've got palm heel, palm heel, elbow, his hands have got up. I've scooped round the back of his head and do a knee. As I pull down, I don't want to be in front of him, so I turn to here. 
I turned on to a hand of pizza where his neck would be, I set and sat on his hand. That was the thing we did. And then turn around and put the pad on the other hand. Right, and then step forwards, it would be drill, what I call drill 1B. Palm heel, palm heel, hammer fist, shift back. Gather up, head butt, hammer fist, push. So number two will now go this way, it's folded, right? Palm heel, elbow, palm heel. Knee back of the clinch. Back foot round. So moving around here for number three. Head butt, knee. Upper cut, upper cut, cross. You see number three's changed direction as well. Cover, grab, put the hand on there. Four still going straight forwards, but it'll be on the other side. Pull them back to there, rise and elbow as I push his head for number five, now it'll be this way. Hammer fist, knee my again from there, step back, round our skip, which will take me there, again we've changed direction. Palm heel, palm heel, elbow, scoop, drive it for knee, push it down from there, hammer fist, seven, set the one's legs. Turn back, that's you. He's all going, if you do that full speed and power, it's one hell of a workout, I tell you. You know what I mean, it blitz you through. Everyone okay with those? So basic, basic So first thing is your hands are up in this phase. We, we, we've got to seize the initiative. I'm going to hook the hands. Remember to hook when you hook, have the hands on top, right? uh, thumbs on top. Don't put your thumbs underneath because if he drops his hands, your hands will go with him, right? You're going to be wide open. So I'm going to go from there, put my hand on his head. Clear this path on this side. I go palm heel, palm heel. Feel him drop. So as he starts to drop from there, keep a hand on his head. Last second, I'm moving out of the way, and then I'm out of there. That was drill one, right? But drill two is clinch us. It's not open like drill one is. I've got this clinch and his arms around the right side, that's it. That makes it hard for me to strike. Right? You know, harder for him, but hard for me. So I do a little head just to turn his head that little bit. When I've got that from there, I get boom, and now I'll turn his head a little bit more. Right? That's all it is. So I just turn his face a bit and see. Slide this arm over when you push on his face and you move here. So I'm offline, I've cleared the path, and I know exactly where his head is. He can't follow me because I'm pushing on his face. From there again, I'll go again. One, always a bit closer than I thought it was going to be, so you can the elbow to, to here, right? If he gets back on the line from there, you know, so he steps around a bit more, I instantly clinch him. He's okay, so you can flow straight to drill three. I'm not just going to spin around, I'm going to crank his neck, that, that here. Do it slowly with a partner, but I'm going to whip him round from there, right? If he's a uh, little head butt, which again will take him back, knee him in the groin from there, and he's his head. Upper cut, upper cut, he comes up, bang, from that one there. For number four, I'll do it sideways on, otherwise you won't see anything, right? But for number four, I throw that shot from there and talk about crashing in and getting hold of that hand, right? So it's like, boom, I'm trying to locate this one. When I've got that, so I've got it out of the way, I'm going to instantly throw a hook and drop this one on. Bang! From there. If he's where he is, then that's fine, right? If I start to feel it move, he starts to move away from the pain, I instantly follow in. So I'll step forwards, I'll hit him here, and then from there I'll move through and spike him with the elbow. For number five, which again I'll do sideways on so you can see, You've got the same initial clinch, but you've got to snatch him back or step back like we did in the drill, doesn't matter which. I pulled him forwards up a little bit from there, his head's here, so I'm going to give him his elbow because I'm too close to do anything else. If it works, it throws his head flying backwards and I'm back to all the other stuff we've done. If he's tilting his head, which is entirely possible, I've got a bang, so oh, yeah, I've hit his head and it'll hurt, but it'll relatively be done anything. Don't want to stay on line because he'll tap on this, so I'll move off to one side, drive the knee into his face. If you have the other leg forwards, just moving on, that's it. If he blocks the knee, from there, I continue to stay the leg, kick that leg out, and then I'm out of there. If you have the other foot forwards, and there's no way of knowing until you've done it, right? I would go there, and it just really a matter of keeping him down now. So I'll step back and boom, so I'm out looking at his turn, I'm right through. Right? And then, you know, so, which obviously I'm not going to do then, but, you know, bang, so he loses his leg, that's it, and then I'll head to wherever the exit is. The fact that I've messed his leg up means he'll be slow on the fall off after the, the, the movement. For drill six, again, palm heel, palm heel, but this time he double covers. I don't want to reach this way because I can get the inside, so I reach here. As we talked about, I'm straight on the line, I'm straight on the line, I'll move slightly to the side to make sure the power line is put my elbows right, which means my knee should already be in line with his groin, with the back leg. I'm going to scoop his arms around, knee in the groin, pull him forward. If you land flat out, as we talked about, I would stamp here on the sand. If there is landing all four, I've got the hammer feet, so I want to be relatively nice and stamp in the start. If I really want to mess up, stamp in the and I'm going to make my way away. Is that okay? Final bit. You might put the pot on your left hand so you've got the part of the drill. And we'll do it on the right hand. Is that, is that okay? Just here. Yeah. Uh, the pot on. Uh, yeah, right hand. <laughs> That's it. Just so, just so you know. But you, you would drill on both sides. It's just this is the side we've done it today, right? So the first one, if you're doing it with a partner, you go there. Put your hand on the pot. Don't let it come off. Remember, it's there to tell you what his head's doing. Bang, bang. Feel it drop. 
boom. Very simple for the first one, right? Second one's you know, uh, you're a bit closer, so again, we'll, that's his head. I'll do the, ha the head bump, I'll do the hammer fist. I'll turn and push, I'll pull my hand on my hip like a hit table, but I'm aware of what that really represents is taking his arm out of the way. I'll then fold that hand from there, I'll do the same three sequences. So it'll be one, two, three, and I've always got the option of reclinching should I need to. Right, for drill th uh, uh, three, uh, the one with the uppercut, you've got to be quite careful with this neck crank thing. So, so generally when people are on pads, they get a little bit excited, so it can be worth missing out, but if you trust your partners enough, they can start here, we'll kind of crank that down from there, it'll bring the pad up, and you put the hand under, you've got a head butt if you want to put it in, it'll drop it down from there for the knee, you just leave the pad pretty much where it was. Right, uppercut, uppercut, it comes up from there, gets boomed for the last one. So that's fairly, uh, fairly straightforward as well, right? For the, the, the hook one, it's a bit difficult because of, you know, the way the, the hand he would throw the hook with is also the hand he needs to hold the pad. So we make this one just about the impact is there. I can still, as if I was doing it, you know, no, no, from there, I'll throw the first up from here. Yeah, that's it. As soon as he starts to step, as soon as he starts to, I step in, bang, and then I hit him with the elbow. Bin number four, right? For number five, I've got hold of the back of the pad as if I've got his, his, his head from there. Snatch it down that little bit and I do that elbow uh, as we were doing. I move towards uh, the, 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 the pad from there, yeah, I do the hammer fist. He turns it over, I'll do the knee and the front kick. Right? He will then move round in front of me, so I can put that round that kick in. So as we talked about, it'll interrupt the flow slightly when he has to turn it over and when he has to do the, the, the round ass kick. And the final one, it's easy, you know, he double braces it so it's ready for the knee. So this is his head, this is his head, this is his arms. I reach for the real head as he put the knee in. Pull him forwards, put your hand on his head, then take it off and swap it out for the pad. Right, give the pad there, move it through and stand. No way you can hold the pads for that. If you've got the mats down, give the, the mats a good hand stand. Is that okay? And if you put all those together, you've got a fairly good overview of the principles and methods of close range strike because there's a bit of everything in there, right? And various tactics and positions and everything else. So you've got a way of drilling it with a partner, you've got a way of drilling it on the pads with a partner, you've got a way of drilling each individual sequence on your own, and you can put it all together in a very quick, you know, I've got 10 minutes, let's blister through this thing and practice for close range striking. And again, you do both sides of that full power, it'll, it'll get you, as you'll find out. Hmm. Is that okay?